Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Derek and I cover Python programming tutorials. In this one, I want to show you the basics of how we can begin creating a website using Python and Django. Let's get started. If you haven't used Django before, all it is is a framework that allows us to very easily prototype new websites very quickly. They do all the heavy lifting for us so we can focus more on actually building the website instead of configuring all the small details. We'll go ahead and open up a terminal inside my text editor, and we need to store our project in a new directory. So we'll cd into my desktop, and then we'll make a directory, and I'll call mine portfolio. We'll go over and grab that folder and place it over here so I get the navigation tree. Now let's cd into portfolio. I'll increase this size, that way you can see it better. So now we're inside our project folder, the first thing that we need on any website project is to make sure that we're using the right dependencies and the right versions of those dependencies. We accomplish this by using a virtual environment. In this example, I'll be using pip env, but you can use whatever you would like. If you don't have pip env installed, you could just say pip install pip env. I already have it, so I'm going to activate it by saying pip env shell. You'll notice that this creates a new pip file in the same directory that we cd'd into. We can click on it, and this will give us all the packages within our virtual environment that we're using. This is how we'll make sure that we use the right versions of the right dependencies and don't get any errors whenever there's a new version out that our system might be using, but our virtual environment isn't using. So now that we have that, let's install the packages that we need for this project. We'll say pip env, and then we'll install Django. And we see now as it installs, we have the Django package under the packages in our pip file. This also creates a pip lock file, which is just a way that we can lock in our dependencies that we're using whenever the pip file may be different. Now that we have Django installed, we can create our Django project. Let's do that by saying Django admin start project, and then we'll give this project a name. We'll say project one and hit enter. And we see that we've created a new directory with project one over here on the left. This has a few different files in it. We see that we get another directory, a project one underneath it, which has a few files in it. And then we get manage.py outside of that project one folder. The manage.py file is how we interface with our Django project using the command line. We have a few other files in here, and I'll talk about those once we need to use them. So let's go ahead and use that manage.py file. We'll cd into whatever you named your project. I named mine project one, so we'll cd into it. If we put ls, we should now see that we have manage.py in that project directory inside of this directory. Since we have manage.py in our working directory, now we can execute it like it was a Python script. I have two different versions of Python on my computer, so that's why I have to type in Python 3. But if you're only running one, then this would just be Python. So Python, manage.py, and then we'll start something called an app. We'll do this by saying start app, and then we'll say app1. An app in a Django project is just some type of functionality that we want our website to have. In this example, we're just building a static website right now, so this will just house our pages. But if you were doing something dynamic, each app should only have one function within it. Now that we've created our app using manage.py, we need to go back into our project one directory inside the same directory and go into the settings.py folder. I'll zoom out just a little and get rid of all this comment here. Inside here, we have a lot of different specifications about our project. We have things like base directory, a security key, debug mode, allowed host, and a lot more. Since we just created an app, we need to add it to the installed apps. We can do that by putting it here in whatever we named it. We named ours app1, so we'll include it here. This just lets the Django project know that there's a new app called app1 that should be registered. We have a few more specifications in here, but we don't need to worry about any of these just yet. We can save and exit out of that. The second thing we need to do is within the urls.py within our project one folder, we need to include urls from this app one. The information that we include inside of urls.py is the URL path to whatever view that we're trying to access. It's okay if that doesn't make sense right now, but what we need is to include the app's URLs into our base urls.py file within our project. We can do that by importing include from django.urls. 
we'll go path and let's make this the root path so we won't add anything to the URL for the user to access this. And then we'll put include and then we'll pass in app1.urls. Once we get this, we now need to make this urls.py file within our app1. So over here, you see that we don't have one yet. So let's click on this and we'll create a new file and we'll call it urls.py. This will house a similar structure to what we have here. So we'll copy this and paste it here. We can get rid of include because we don't need it here because we only ever want to include from that project one base urls.py file. This one will just have the paths that we want. So let's say when the user goes to the root path, we need to pass the user some type of view. A view is just a way to render some type of information to the user. So we'll say views.index, since this will be our home view. We don't have this included yet, so we need to include it here. We'll say from the current directory, import views. So now that we're importing the view, we need to create some function that is called index to pass a view to the user when they access this URL. We'll do that by going into the views. And now we can put a function. That function name needed to be index. Each function needs to take a request from the user. So we'll pass that in. And we can use return, which returns something to the user. And we'll render using the request. And then we'll put in a template name. We don't have any templates in this project yet. But let's say index.html. All templates will be included like this using their app name. So app1 index.html. We'll save this and now we need to create this template. By default in Django, we need to create a new folder inside of our app called templates. The templates directory within each app will be where the Django project looks for HTML files. We'll create templates and now we're including app1 index.html. So the convention to do this is then to put the app name as the next directory. And then we'll include a new file instead of a new directory called index.html. This will be the template that we pass using this view whenever a user goes to this URL, which was included from here. So now we'll go to that index and we'll create something simple. So let's just say, we'll put an h1 tag it works. We'll close that tag and we'll save that file. The first time, I know this is rather complicated, but we'll go through it all again at the end. But for now, we have a template. We have a URL that points to that template using a view, and now we can access it using the python manage.py file. We'll execute python manage.py, and instead of doing start app how we did last time, we can use a function called run server. We'll execute that. And we see that we have a slight error, include views.index. This shouldn't be a string. So this should not be a string here. And now we'll run this again. Once we run that, we see that we get a local host that we can use to view our project. So we'll go and open up a web browser. Whenever we go to that URL, we see that we get the template back that we wrote in that templates folder on our page. This is just a basic HTML page right now, and we'll add more to it later to see more functionality of the Django project. But let's go through what happened one more time. So whenever a user goes to the root URL, we see that we can put in a different URL by something like any letters here, and we get a 404 because it's not found. So the root URL is just where the user goes to that base URL. In our case, it's a local host. Right now in our project, whenever a user accesses our site, the URL that the user uses goes first to that URLs.py within our project one folder. It goes here to our URL patterns and checks for paths that match. We have a path here that matches. So since this path matches, we go to include app1.urls. That just means that we go and check into our app one folder for URLs. Once here, we find a path that matches again. Since we're in the root, this path matches, so we return the function from views of index. On the views.py file, we have declared a function that takes a request from a user and returns an HTML page. 
Then we wrote the HTML page with just a simple H1 tag that says it works. And that's how we get the user from the URL all the way to the template. In the next video, we'll look at how we can style this page so it looks a little bit nicer instead of a bland white background with only one line on it. I'll see you then.